Alrighty, round one against Mr. Lose You Hope. His, his name is really familiar. I think I've played against him before. This is a really unfortunate hand. That means I'm not going to get to draw my better Frost Totems this rank or a Gride of the Grimgaunt. And I can't play Corpse Crawler right rank one, but that doesn't matter since I have like a billion of those anyway. So I don't know what factions matter since he has no soul bound, so I'm just going to play Grove Huntress in the uh, middle lane. Is the only thing important is Nexus Overwatch. And that's a pretty good trade for Grove Huntress, right? And it's going to be a 5-4. I'll just put it over here. Not in the side lane, but, but not in the mid lane either. Man, when I played that card, my ears just about exploded because of the stupid volume. So now that we've turned that down, maybe I will be able to hear out of both my ears. <laughs> um, yeah, let's find Let's figure out what he's doing over here. If we're lucky, he's not playing Dijon because, I don't know, the mirror is so miserable. It's really, it's really difficult, but it's doable. So he's playing Umbric with Soothsayer Hermit, which is a really strong card. I actually kill his Umbric Glider here, and he doesn't do breakthrough damage to me, so that block's a little questionable. But, you know, that's fine. I think my best play is to play the Frostfall Tracker, because I want to level it for sure. And then I either play... I can play the Griff Huntress to pump my Tracker uh, to block his Hermit, or what I could do is play Tracker here, then play Branch Weaver Druid and block with the Tree Folk. I think that's probably a little more solid overall. Uh, that way, Branch Weaver Druid gets to rank 2, which is its weak rank, but rank 3 is really strong. Uh, making a 14-14 and a 1-1 to block. So put Branch Reaver Druid in the sideline. It doesn't really, he, he's a Tempest, so his sideline things. He's Tempest uh, Uterra, so his sideline crap doesn't even matter. I just want to make sure to keep my creatures in threes so he can't use his mobility as effectively. Didn't draw the Corpse Crawl I wanted to, but that's fine. I have a Stag of Lists and a Torgon Vendor, which are, or a Stag of Lists is really important in this matchup because if he can't beat me down early uh tempest's progression curve and draft is kind of like they're really really good at rank two like the rank one is okay the rank two is absolutely absurd with like 10 10 volcano giants and 11 other thranic ambushers and frost shatter strike that card's insane at rank two but their rank three doesn't actually scale that well past their rank two cards it's just they need to get really far ahead in rank two and then they'll be able to like you know put a lot of pressure on you. So having a stag of list to stay alive is going to be much better for me. Uh, Size up is really annoying. That means I can't make him stop the beat down. So I have two options here. I could or a couple options here. I could play stag of list over here, just anywhere, because I can't block this razor to stalker. So I could play it any of these three spaces, and then I could torque my mender to pump my frostfall tracker. Uh, that, that makes it live against the Frost uh, Seismic Adept. So then on his turn, if I play like Mender here and Stag here, he either has to scoot his Razor Tooth Stalker in the side lane, then attack me and trade with his Adept, or he has to move the Tracker into the side lane. That means all three of my creatures will be blocking his Stalker, so he can't connect with it. And I think that is the most that is the strongest play I have here. So... Uh, it doesn't really matter where I put my creatures, I think, uh, in, or in which order. Because if I put the stag here, he's just going to move and kill the mender. And if I don't put, if I put the stag in front of the stalker, he's just going to move and kill the mender. If I put the mender over here, then he'll just, you know, attack. And then it's in a center lane, which is much less ideal for me. Because if he wants to move into the side lane, he'll be locked off and only have one space to move. Uh, this does kill a seismic after, which is really good for me because that card's really strong. Drawing the Patriarch is actually pretty good here too. So it looks like he's just trading off his seismic adept in order to put two counters on the Razor Tooth Stalker, which is you know decent, not amazing. What I'm probably gonna do his here is uh, play Corpse Crawler and sack my branch, uh, my Torgmine Mender, and then play my own. Patriarch, I guess. Actually, no, Patriarch doesn't do that much right now. Because I need to kill this Razor Tooth Stalker before it like dominates me. And I can do that two ways. One is by playing a Warclaw and then a Venom Fang, which would do a lot of damage to a Stalker to kill it, but then I don't really have anything on the board. Uh, or I could play Corpse Crawler, which would put a level 2 Corpse Crawler in my deck, which is a 12-13, which is really strong. And it kills his Stalker in one hit, plus I save my Mender from dying anyway to this Master. 
And then what I want to do is play... Hmm. If I play Warclaw, I get, I'm left with a token I can use. If I play Venom Fang, I can poison one of his creatures. I'm gonna, likely going to have to block his creatures anyway, so it's probably better to play the Warclaw to block his master and then make a token over here. That way I kill his Stalker, uh, gum up the lanes a little more for his mobility, gain life with Stag of Bliss, and have a little bit more you know, board control with my Corpse Crawler, even though it's really damaged now. I didn't pick up any Torrent Witches, which I would have liked to get, because the Spirit Torrent that creates really good for if you're playing a Corpse Crawler deck. This is just a straight trade. Okay. And then he plays his own Branch Weaver Joy to kill my Corpse Crawler. You know, that's fine. Uh, so now what I can do is play Torrent Soldier, maybe? I'm trying to think. If I, I, want, I definitely want to play Branch Weaver this turn, so maybe if I play Branch Weaver here and here, then play the Torrent Soldier in this side lane. I need to be able to block this Razor Tooth Stalker. So if this Raptor and this Branch Weaver do trades, I can't, I'm not really going to deal with the Patriarch this turn because it's whatever. And if he plays a, a level 2 Razor Tooth Stalker, I do need to deal with that though because it's a, uh, I don't remember how big it is, but it's really big. I think it's an 8-9. And then it becomes a 10-11 every time it, or I think it's actually bigger than that, 11-12 uh, maybe. It gets plus 3 plus 3. I just know I need to block that creature. So if these things trade, I can make a stack of three creatures in the first three lanes. And that makes him only able to play his Razor 2 Stalker either in front of one of my creatures or uh, right next to the Patriarch, which limits its movement options to just that one space. So we're just going to let Battle Resolve here. Then play Branch Fever Druid. I don't have... Infernal Visage, there's no point in thinking about the side lane. And then I could play Venom Fang to poison his Patriarch, or I could play Torrent Soldier to put a level 2 Torrent Soldier in my deck. Uh, I think for this time it's Venom Fang. That way if I draw a Death Seeker and want to block it, I can, you know, be able to kill it with that. Or Torgon Mender, I guess. I'd actually do Torgon Mender and Death Seeker. <laughs> so he pumped his Patriarch. And there's the Residue Stalker that I was talking about. So I definitely want to play the Death Seeker here. I could probably let him attack me for 7 first, because the damage doesn't really matter that much. Is that correct? No, I shouldn't let him attack me. There's really no point. And then play the Torgma Mender and pump my Tree Folk so the Tree Folk doesn't die. And then I drew a Warclaw and a Stag of Bliss, so he's not... Usually against Dejan, you just never level the spell, because they, they go up the lanes too easily. Especially if they play around it like I did. Like it, It's going to be really hard for him to uh, connect with his creature, and it's just like an underleveled creature with mobility 1. Master of Elements, on the other hand, is an incredible card. He might be able to kill my Venom Thing now. With uh, like Frost Rider Strike, and deal me like a billion damage. That would be like the worst case scenario here. Oh no, it happened. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's the worst. Okay, what's my next play? So Bitter Frost Totem minus six minus six is this, and then I could play Stag. Is that the best play? Probably. So I just play Warclaw and then Bitter Frost. I don't really I get a uh Raptor out of it, but I don't gain any like having a level two Warclaw is way better than having a level two stag. Like, if I have to have level 3 Warclaw and level 2 Stag, I would much rather have the other way around. Because this is a 16-16, which is quite large. Uh, this is a 17-17, by the way. It's really, really big. A really strong card. I really like Master Elements. So I'm just going to shrink this now and then play a Stag in front of it. Block. This way the Stag actually gains me a little bit of life every turn. I think it's 4 life a turn. Uh, to, you know, mitigate his attack a little bit. And then, who knows what I can do. Playing Cacklebones really sucks in Ring 2 and 3, because I honestly just rare drafted it. It's not even that great in draft. Because they play more spells than you, you're just going to lose. <laughs> That's kind of just how it works, you know? If he blocks the Stag of Bliss, I'm definitely going to... Yeah. Huh. Okay, so what's my play here? I can Corpse Crawler the Stag to kill his Master, and then chump the... Tree folk? 
I mean, I could just chump the 7-7 seven, seven tree folk and kill his other one, but then he gets to play more spells, which is definitely not what I want. So I think I kill the stag here, then Grove Matriarch, because when I'm behind like I am, and he has a level 2 lifeblood dryad in his deck, uh, it's better to play Grove Matriarch and level it up, because that card can block twice. Blightwalker can only block once. Especially under leveled, it's never going to be able to kill the creatures I want it to. <clears throat> Hit a few snags. I'm not sure if I can be able to pull this one out. I don't have any Tijin Siphons or anything like that uh, to turn the Tide of Battle instantly, which is like this faction's strongest card, like at rare. Tijin Siphon's absolutely nuts. Uh, my deck's actually not that strong. Now that I'm playing it, I'm like, yeah, you know, this Corpse Crawler plan, if you don't draw the Corpse Crawler, you just like play a bunch of really bad creatures. <laughs> it's not working out for me. Uh, maybe the Stag can bite. What the heck is this Toxic Moon? <laughs> That does not seem worth the play. He should have just traded the creatures and played something else. Like That would have been much better. Uh, okay, for some reason he replaced one of his creatures. So what have I got here? I can Corpse Crawler this 7-7 seven, seven, to sacrifice my Seedling, then play Stag in front of his 8-4. Uh, my Stag gets really damaged off of this. But on the plus side, he's gummed up his own lanes with these 1-1s, one -ones, so he can't actually even move his creatures, because <laughs> they're in like the perfect spot for me. And this gains me a life, 6 life a turn. So far I've gained, what, 2, 4, 8, 14 life off the stag of this, which is pretty good. Stormcaller is pretty obnoxious. I can kill it with Cacklebones though and force him to block another creature, which actually, you know, is the play here. It sucks, because, you know... <laughs> It lets him pull further ahead with the extra spell, but I don't. I'm not actually rolling in options here. Well, is that the play, right? Because I kill this, I have a 16-8 in play. Is that going to be better than whatever he plays? Yes, probably, because he still has to deal with it. And nothing deals with a card at level uh, one that he's played, other than the Stormcaller and the Umbric Umbric uh, Glider, the 11-7, I think it is. This also does 16 damage to him, which is pretty nice. And then these things trade, and I play a Graveborn Glutton or Crypt Slime. Uh, I think Crypt Slime. That way, if when he kills it, I get to you know, block his creature. Back at 66. That's 20 life gained from the stag. It's a whole third of my life total right now. So he, he has to block. He can use his Capo Bone spell to block the stag. That'll that's probably going to be his best play. Then he has to block my other level 1 creatures I drew that turn, because my hand was bad. I forgot I had Frostfall Tracker. That card probably would have been pretty good to draw last turn. So now what does he play? Razortooth Stalker? I can't imagine that's what he would want to play, since I have so many creatures in my lanes. Another Branch Weaver Druid. Probably on the Cackle Bones. Okay, that's the last place I would have expected him to put it. But that's that's fine. And Seismic Adept. Okay, so battle immediately because I have no tricks or anything like that. That leaves me with an Oozling here to block his Tree Folk. I can play this to block his Seismic Adept. And if I played Branch Reaver Druid, he can't actually move it because all, my lanes will be full. Uh, so I'm like guaranteed to kill his Seismic Adept here. Level 2 Bitter Frost Totem, that's that's what we needed. It's minus 10, minus 10, I believe. So any level 3 creature he plays, I can like destroy, like utterly wreck. It looks like we're going to rank 4, which, yeah. I don't have a Howl of Ziff. <laughs> like, hmm. I think my win condition is going to be playing a... I'm honestly not sure. Like, probably going to be playing a, a Ride of the Grimgaunt and Grave Matriarch or something like that. I'm not, not too in control of this game. I'm taking a long time with my turns. Jeez, game is hard. So there's the level three master, which is like the card I least want to see right now. Yeah, that's not even the worst. For some reason, he pumped his branch weaver druid instead of his seismic adept. 
to get just get in for seven damage i don't understand that at all <laughs> now he's set me up perfectly to grove huntress my own tree folk well it works less good now since you have pumped his team so maybe i can't do that i just pump my own grove huntress to, uh, that's not going to be enough damage block the death seeker here then bitter frost totem as master I think is my only play it sucks because I lose like all my board. Can't really do much about that. Not sure what I'm gonna do to come back in this game. Probably not gonna be Torque Lander. <sighs> Man, I think I drafted a pretty poor deck. Didn't get any of the howls I usually see in Dijon or Dijon Siphon or like any of the six spells. So he Hold on. What did he do to that? I missed it. He toxic boomed it. Okay. <laughs> so. Hmm. This is poison too. So if I block here on the poison the branch weaver druid, then torg my mender and pump and gain my. I could either let my torg my mender live because it would go to twenty four power. Or 24 toughness, that's probably better than gaining 12 life, I think. Just because it gives me an extra creature in play. Even though it's not huge, it's like something. Gaining 12 life does not give me really any advantage. That's probably going to be the end of me. I can't really deal with that size of adept. And ironically, the only cards I can really play are Death Seeker, which is just a 1 1. I can't put it in front of anything. Uh, luckily, his deck seems to be feeling, filling the board up a lot, so maybe we can take advantage of that a little bit so he won't be able to you know, kill me with Life Blood Dryad. This hand is awful. I'm probably going to concede. I mean, I'm dead. Like, I, my hand's bad. I can't do anything to his plays next turn. I'm not going to have any good creatures in play. Like,. This is the death knell for me. He just moves the death seeker away and hits me for 12. <sighs> yep, I'm dead. 